Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. Webster. I teach third grade and today I'm giving you a book tasting of the book Brian's Winter by Gary Polson. Chapter 1. Fall came on with a softness so that Brian didn't realize what was in store. A hard spine Northwoods winter until it was nearly too late. He had never thought he would be here for this long. After the plane crash that marooned him in the wilderness, he had lived day by day for 54 days until he had found the survival pack in the plane. Then, another 35 days through the northern summer, somehow living the same day-to-day -day pattern he had started just after the crash. To be sure, he was very busy. The emergency pack on the plane had given him a gun with 50 shells, a survival 22 rifle, a hunting knife with a compass in the handle, cooking pots and pans, a fork, spoon, and knife, matches, two butane lighters, a sleeping bag and foam pad, a first aid kit with scissors, a cap that said Cessna, fishing line, lures, hooks and sinkers, and several packets of freeze-dried food. He tried to ration the food out, but found it impossible, and within two weeks he had eaten it all, even the package of dried prunes, something he hated in his old life. They tasted like candy and were so good he ate the whole pack in one sitting. The results were nearly as bad as when he, gl he glutted on the gut cherries when he first landed. His stomach tied in a knot, and he spent more than an hour as at his latrine hole. In truth, he felt relieved when the food was gone. It had softened him, made him want more and more, and he could tell that he was moving mentally away from the woods, his situation. He started to think in terms of the city again, of hamburgers and malts, and his dream changed. In the days, weeks, and months since the, since the plane had crashed, he had dreamed many times. At first, all the dreams had been of food, food he eaten, food he had wished he had eaten, and food he wanted to eat. But this time, it progressed the food dreams, seemed to fade out, and he dreamed of other things, of friends, of his parents, always of their worry. How they wanted to see him, sometimes that they were back together, and more and more of girls. As with food, he dreamed of girls he knew, girl he wished he had known, and girls he wanted to know. But with the supplies from the plane, his dream changed back to food, and when it was gone, in what seemed a very short time, a kind of wanting hunger returned that he had not felt since the first week. For a week or two, he was in torment, never satisfied, even when he had plenty of fish and rabbit, or a full bird to eat. He thought of the things he didn't have. This somehow was never enough, and it seemed to be angry all the time, so angry that he wasted a whole day just slamming things around and swearing at his luck. When it finally ended, war away was more like it, he felt a great sense of relief. It was as if somebody he didn't like had been visiting and finally gone. It was given then that he first really noted the cold. Almost a whiff, something he could smell. He was hunting with the rifle when he sensed the change. He had awakened early just before the first light and had decided to spend the entire day hunting and get maybe two or three more full birds. He blew on the coals from the fire the night before they glowed red, adding some bits of dry grass, which burst into flame at once and heated water of one of the aluminum pots that had come in the plane survival pack coffee he said sipping the hot water not that he ever liked coffee but something about having a hot liquid the morning made it easier for the day to start gave him time to think plan his morning as he sipped the sun came up over the lake and for the hundredth time he noted how beautiful it was mist rising the new sun shining like gold he banked the fire carefully with dirt to keep the coals hot for later picked the rifle up and moved into the woods he was instantly hunting all sounds, any movement went to him, filled his eyes, ears, mind, so that he became a part of it, and it was then that he noted the change, a new coolness, soft, kiss on the cheek, a touch. It was the same air, the same sun, the same morning, but it was different, so it changed so that he stopped and raised his hand to his cheek and touched where the coolness had brushed him. But why was it different, he whispered. What smell? So that's the end of our tasting, but if you'd like to check out this book at the library, it's Brian's Winter by Gary Paulson.